Something you've never known. Something you've never heard of. Miracle. Somebody shout, miracle. It will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Raise up those anointed hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we exalt you tonight. Glorify you tonight. We're full of expectation tonight. I will pray, Lord, you will shower your blessings now upon everyone in Jesus' name. Roll every mountain away. Touch every life tonight. And direct us to Calvary so that at Calvary, every need will be met, supplied in Jesus' name. Save souls tonight. Sanctify your people tonight. Feel what the Holy Ghost tonight. Heal the sick tonight. Work miracles in every life tonight in Jesus' name. I will pray that that same Jesus with the same power, the same anointing, and the same authority will manifest himself in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Do something new in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you and make your amen real in your life. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13. We're looking at verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ. The same yesterday and today and forever. Look at that again. It's talking about Jesus, the Son of God. Talking about Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer. Talking about Jesus, the one that was born of Virgin Mary. There's nobody like him. And there's no other salvation from any other place except from this Jesus and he tells us, this Jesus is the same. There's no change. And there is no alteration. The same power, yet days come by, he has that same power today. The same authority. And the same mountain moving authority and power, he has that today. This same Jesus, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. And today, even this very day, you'll find him the same in your life. The same Jesus, the same Savior, the same Redeemer, the same Healer, the same Defender that comes to protect you. And what he did before, he'll do in your life today. He'll save your soul. I was waiting for an amen there. It will heal your sick body. Blind eyes, it will open. The lame will rise up and walk. And every challenge you have that you have brought here tonight, like you did in days gone by, is going to perform a miracle in your life. For Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today. And for how long? Forever. What does that mean? That means... As long as this world exists, and as long as there are people that are praying, as long as there are people that are expecting from him, and looking up to him, and saying, here we are today, what you did, years gone by, do it today, because the same yesterday, today, and forever, he'll do it in your life. By coming to Luke chapter 4. Let's look at the way he walked yesterday, years gone by, yesterday years, so that you'll understand what he's going to do today, because something must happen in your life tonight. And what he's going to keep on doing every time we mention his name, because this same Jesus is here tonight. He's there by your side. He will do something. I said they will do something. Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Here is Jesus Christ 
announcing to the people, proclaiming to the people, declaring to the people the spirit of the Lord. That's the spirit of power. The spirit that breaks anointing because he has anointed me to preach, to proclaim the gospel to the poor. That is, there is good news for the poor. The poor cannot pay for salvation. Nobody can pay for salvation. The good news is that salvation will come to you. Those who cannot pay for a miracle, you cannot pay for the miracle of Christ because you are poor. And there's nothing to buy that miracle. There's good news to the poor tonight. A miracle is coming your way. The deliverance and the healing, the freedom, the victory that you cannot pay for. It says it's giving him the anointing and the power so that the poor that have nothing to pay, it says the gospel, the good news is coming to them. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. Whatever has happened in your life, in your family, your spiritual life, in your domestic life, that brought broken heartedness. Tonight, the Lord will heal your broken heart. That thing you have lost will come back home. That thing you are looking for tonight is a night of discovery and a night of restoration. And it is yours in Jesus' name. And it says to preach deliverance, to perform deliverance, and to provide deliverance for the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. Those dim eyes will become brighter tonight. And those blind eyes will be opened tonight. And then it says, and to search at liberty them that are bruised. Every yoke in your life broken. All the curse removed. Because it comes to set at liberty them that are bruised or bound. In verse 19, is to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister. And he sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. If you look on him tonight, and you focus on him tonight, and your mind, your heart, your spirit, your soul, centers on Christ tonight, you are not going to go empty-handed. Verse 21, and he began to say unto them, and remember, it's the same yesterday, and today, and forever. And what is said yesterday is saying today. What is said to them is saying unto you. What's he telling you tonight? This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day, this is your day. I said this is your day. It says this day is this scripture. Every promise we're going to look at tonight will be fulfilled in your life. Every word of prophecy you hear tonight will be fulfilled in your life. Everything that Christ has paid for, provided on the cross of Calvary tonight, will be yours in Jesus' name. This day will not pass you by. That mountain must move. This day will not pass you by. That barrenness must be cancelled. This day will not pass you by. Those blind eyes will be opened. This day will not pass you by. That miracle is coming your way. The moment you stretch out your hand, lo and behold, it is given unto you. This day, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And you are going to tell your testimony. Look at Mark. Mark chapter 7. In Mark chapter 7, I remember what we're looking at. Jesus Christ, the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. In Mark chapter 7, verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished. Beyond measure surprised. 
beyond measure, amazed, saying, He has done all things well. Did you hear that? I said, did you hear that? Look at the person beside you and say, he has done all things well. Look at them. Don't, don't, don't look now. Don't look on the ground. It's not doing it on the ground. It's doing it in the life of that person. You are looking. Look at them. Look at them. He has done all things well. Wipe your tears away. Take the sorrow away. Take all the doubts away because he will do all things well in your life tonight in Jesus' name. You're going to go out of this place and you're going to tell your neighbor and you're going to tell the people you're going in the bus, you say, something happened to me. In the car, something happened to me. And as you get back home, something happened to me. And then they say, what? He said, can I begin to tell you, he has done all things well. My sorrow is gone. My suffering is gone. My heartache is gone. My broken heart is gone. My doubt is gone. All the pressures are gone. He, Christ, who has not changed, he, Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. He has done, tell me, tell me, all things well. It will happen to you tonight. And look at this, look at this, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, that same Jesus, he has not changed how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about? Who went about? What happened? Doing good is coming to your side today. That place you are sitting is coming there tonight. A hand will touch you. An anointing will flow through your life. In that place where you have the challenge, in that place where you have the problem, he will do good in your life in Jesus' name. He went about doing good. Healing. 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 My name is there. I said my name is there. There is no discrimination. There is no partiality. He looks at you today. He said, I can fix that. I can do that. I can solve that problem. I can remove that mountain. If you open the door tonight and you say, Lord, I am here. Something is about to happen. Because it's going around to everyone and it's healing all that are oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Remember, Jesus Christ, the same, tell me, yesterday, tell me more, and today, tell me the rest, and forevermore. Tonight, I'm talking to you on full redemption and restoration through this same Jesus. Full redemption and restoration through this same Jesus. It is not just a message. It's a ministration unto you. Full redemption for you tonight. Full restoration for you tonight. Through this same Jesus. Those people in the good old days, they got it. And you. Who am I talking to? I said you. Who am I talking to there? You are getting something. You on this way, a miracle will meet you there. You bend down, a miracle will raise you up. And you are kind of wobbling, a miracle will set you straight tonight. Miracle. Shout it. Miracle. It will come upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Full redemption. And restoration through this same Jesus. Three things we're looking at. Number one, 
the promised redeemer and redemption. The promised redeemer and redemption. Number two, the present restorer and restoration. Today, today, the present restorer. Because in the present tense, in the day in which we're living today, while you're sitting down there, there will be present restoration in your life in Jesus' name. Number three, prompt response and realization. Prompt response and realization. That means your miracle is now. Your miracle is immediate. Instantaneously tonight, you will feel it. You will sense it. You will know it. You will possess it in Jesus' name. Number one, the promised redeemer and redemption. You see, there were people in the past, they were looking ahead. The redeemer is coming. The redemption is coming. And they thought it was very, very far away. Look at this Job. I'm reading from chapter 19, Job, chapter 19, and I'm reading from verse 25, Job, chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 25, it says, for I know, you know, when you come to the Lord, you cannot be dilly dallying. When you come to the Lord, you cannot be up and down. When you come to the Lord, you cannot be thinking and doubting. You have to have this assurance. I know. I'm standing here and I know. I said I know. I know that your case is in the hand of Jesus tonight. I know. Somebody shout, I know. I know that your problems are solved tonight. I know that your salvation is secured tonight. I know that your healing is coming tonight. I know that the deliverance is certain tonight. You know, that's the reason we're here. We're here because we know. We know that Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name there, I'll be in the midst of them. And Job, Job was suffering. All the people that surrounded him, they were trying to comfort him. But he said, you are all comforters that are miserable, miserable comforters. They didn't say the right thing. He said, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, but I know. Somebody there tonight I know. For I know, I know, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh, yet in my flesh, I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold him, and not another. The man, look at how definite the man was. Boils all over the body, pain all over the body, loss of children, loss of servants, loss of farm, loss of business. He said, I'm going to get more. I said, I'm going to get more. Disappointment, he said, everything is going to turn around. And then he said, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my rays be consumed within me. As you think about that, he actually, as you look at what he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and I know that he shall stand, at the latter time, it wasn't uh, thinking about the last chapter of Job. It was thinking about a far, far future. And then he said, at that time, I will see him. What happened? Look at chapter 42. Chapter 42. 
I'm reading from verse 1. Job answered the Lord and said, I know. This man is always saying, I know. I think you also should always say, I know. At the time of prayer, I know. At the time of ministration, I know. At the time of standing upon the promises that cannot fail, I know. At the time when the healing is taking place, I know. And thank God tonight, I know. I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Look at verse 5. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but, tell me, but now mine eyes sees thee. He thought it would be at the latter day. I will see him. He thought it would be at the far future. I will see him. But the Lord came to his rescue earlier than he thought. Your prayers are answered earlier than your thought. Your miracles are coming earlier than your thought. The body is taken away earlier than your thought. All you need to maintain in your heart is that I know. I know. I know. And it will be done. Look at verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Thank God he knew. And say, so thank God he knew. And thank God I know. Thank God I know. Thank God I know. He was talking about a far future, but immediately, look at what happened to him. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job, tell me yourself, twice as much as he had before. Double. 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 Do you really believe that tonight? It will happen to you in Jesus' name. I know that my Redeemer lives. And that I will see him. You saw him, you will see him. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 11. For the Redeemer is mighty. They shall plead their cause with thee. Satan might be against you. Jesus, the Redeemer, will confront him for you tonight. Any evil power, any evil oppression, oppressors, they might gang around like in a conspiracy. Christ, your Redeemer, is mighty. He will scatter them tonight. Enemies in the day, Enemies in the night, enemies across your way that said you will not make it. Laugh at them. I said laugh at them. They do not understand, they do not know what you know, that your Redeemer is mighty. And he shall plead their cause with thee. I say, chapter 63. We're talking about the Redeemer and the redemption. The Redeemer and the redemption. Isaiah chapter 63. I'm reading from verse 16. This is good. And this is for me. I said this one is for me. Isaiah chapter 63. Reading from verse 16. Doubtless thou art our father. No doubt... The Almighty God is your father. Though Abraham be ignorant of us, what? What's that talking about? He's talking about Gentiles, Gentiles. Though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not. Israel as a nation, the Jewish people, they say, uh, get away, you are a Gentile. And they push you away. It says, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not, thou, O Lord, art our father.
Father. Personal now, personal now. Thou, O Lord, art my Father. The Jews may not know you. Israel may not know you. Those people in the old covenant may not know you. They say, you are a Gentile. You are a black man. You are a black woman. But God is your father. I say, God is your father. And our redeemer. Make that personal. Make it personal. My redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. It's been there from all eternity. He knows about the depth of the problem, the height of the problem, but he has all power because he's eternal. Congratulations tonight. Redemption has come to you. Luke chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1, redemption. I said redemption. You will not die in slavery. You will not die with that sickness. You will not die in sin. Redemption has come for you. I said redemption has come for you. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 68. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God. God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. His people, are they there tonight? His people, are they present here tonight? He has visited, there's a divine visitation tonight, and redeemed his people. He has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant. And then he goes on to say, as he spake, by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we shall be saved from our enemies. I thought you would say amen there. Yeah. Private enemies, you are saved from them. Public enemies, you are saved from them. Hidden enemies, you are saved from them. Boasting enemies, you are saved from them. Conspiring enemies. And those enemies, they, they, they say somewhere, they say, he doesn't know anything. She doesn't know anything. I brought down so and so, I'll bring him down. I brought down so and so, I'll bring her down. They don't know the person they are talking about. I said they don't know the person they are talking about. Your case will flaw them. Your case will destroy them. They have tried it with so and so. Those ones don't have any redeemer. And they have tried it with so and so. Those ones do not have any redeemer. And then they now face you. Uh -huh. Their end has come. Because it says that we should be saved from my enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which is swear to our father Abraham that he would grant us that being delivered out of the hand personal, personal, of my enemies might serve him without fear. The Lord is talking about you. Fears in the night, gone. Fears of occultism, gone. Fear of Juju people, gone. Fear of something coming from the village, gone. Fear of something coming from the river, gone. Fear from your place of work, gone. Fear of poverty, gone. Pray fear of whatever they said, whoever said it, gone in Jesus' name. That you will grant unto me. That you will grant unto me. 
that I be delivered out of the hand of my enemies might serve him without fear in holiness wonderful now the time has come you are going to be holy holier than you ever thought in your life you have been thinking can i be holy can i be holy grace will come in your life power will come in your life the kind of holiness that will surprise you yourself and you'll say is that me is that me i'm talking about you i said i'm talking about you in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life that's redemption you are going to have total redemption and it is the promise of god the promise of christ and it is coming upon your life look at galatians chapter 3 galatians chapter 3 reading from verse 13 god has redeemed us from the curse of the law every curse is taken off your head every curse is taken out of your education every cause is taken out of your business every cause is taken out of your family christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us he has carried everything away for it is written cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree that the blessing of abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. I'm going to go back to the beginning of verse 14. I need to make this one personal now. That the blessing of Abraham might come on me through Jesus Christ and that we, I, might receive you are going to receive something tonight. I said you are receiving something tonight. You might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Colossians, Colossians, chapter 1, verse 13. Was delivered us, was delivered me from the power of darkness. Don't go away yet. Look at all the things they are talking about. Grandma spoke about that. Grandpa spoke about that. Those wicked people, those wicked powers, powers of darkness, see what they did. See what they did. See what they did. And they buried something there. And they hid something there. And they did one sacrifice there. The Lord has singled you out. Out of that family, under oppression, under a curse, under depression. And they say, they always die young. You will live long. Because it says, he has delivered us, me, from the power of darkness. And yes, there is a, don't read everything yet. There is a spiritual aeroplane. And the Lord puts you inside that aeroplane. And when there's trouble, translated you out. Calamity, it translated you out. Sickness, it translated you out. Oppression, it translated you out. And it took you to the heavenly places. All the mountains, that spiritual aeroplane flew over them. All the valleys, that spiritual aeroplane flew over them. All the ditches, all the traps of the devil, all the snares, that aeroplane flew over them. 
and he landed you unto victory. Landed you in success. Read that thing again to see now if you understand. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have we have are you going to have it by and by 10 years to come next year when do you have redemption when do you have deliverance when do you have healing when do you have your miracle when do you have freedom See, it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. When will he forgive your sin? Of course, it's done. Now, Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God that bringeth forgiveness has appeared unto all men. The grace of God that bringeth conversion has appeared unto all men. The grace of God that bringeth healing has appeared unto all men. The grace of God that bringeth deliverance has appeared unto all men. It's appearing to you. It's appearing to you. And the moment you embrace it and take it, that grace is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and what they lost, we should live soberly. Now I can be sober. Righteously, now I can be righteous. Godly, now I can be godly when I said when in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Look at this who gave himself, who gave himself, who gave himself for you, for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works coldness is driven away from your life <laughs> living a so so life I'm always tired always weak Lukewarm, anemic, no backbone, no stress, managing life. Look up at me. That thing is gone. A life of excitement, a life of joy, a life of zeal, a life of power, a life of authority. A life of authority and excitement and enthusiasm. A life when all the enemies and all the enemies of progress, they clear out of your way in Jesus' name. I could not stand, I could not sit, I could not bend, I could not talk, I could not hear, I could not confront anything. You know, and I'm telling them, leave me alone, leave me alone. Don't worry about leaving you alone. They have left you alone already. <laughs> you will stand and you'll be strong in Jesus' name. <laughs> to purify a peculiar people unto himself, zealous of good works. I'm talking about you tonight. Something has happened to you. Revival in your soul. Revival in your spirit. Revival in your heart. Revival in your body. Revival in your prayer life. 
Revival in your family. Revival in your business. You will be happy to live. That thing that's, you know, I don't know whether I want to live or not. I want to die. No, this time not, nobody wants to die now. I said nobody wants to die now. The strength of the Lord will carry you through. The power of the Lord will carry you through. Because the blood of Jesus is washing you tonight. It's cleansing you tonight. It's redeeming you tonight. And it wants to purify you to be a peculiar person, a peculiar child of God. You'll be zealous of good works in Jesus' name. Point number two now. The present restorer and restoration. In this present day, the present restorer and restoration. Thank God, everything you lost before is going to be restored today. Everything you have been wishing, I wish I could have that. I wish I could get that. Tonight is the night of restoration. Isaiah, Isaiah, I'm reading from chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. I read here from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 57. We're reading from verse 18. I'm waiting for you. This one is so good. You must not miss this. Isaiah chapter 57. Look at verse 18. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts to him and to his mourners. Something left your life and you are mourning, you are sorrowful, you are sad, cheer up. I said cheer up. Restoration has come tonight. That thing, I tried to grab it. I lost it. And then my mates are now far ahead of me. You'll catch up with them. Because it says, I have seen his ways. I've seen his regrets. I've seen his problem. I've seen his challenges. I will heal him. You're healed tonight. I will lead him. He'll lead you tonight. I will restore comforts unto him. Chapter 58. I say chapter 58. Verse 8, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Thy health shall spring forth speedily. Thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be the rare word. Then shall thou call and the Lord shall answer. Tonight, a night of answered prayer. Tonight, a night of receiving miracle. Tonight, a night of manifestation of power. It says, then shalt thou call. Who is this talking about? I said, who is this talking about? Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and the speaking of vanity. If thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity. Darkness will be driven away from your life. Confusion driven away from your life. Weariness taken away from your life. And thy darkness shall be as the known day. The Lord shall guide thee continually. And satisfy thy soul in drought. And make fat thy bones. And thou shall be like a watered garden. Like a spring of water. Whose waters fail not. And they that be of thee shall be. Build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. 
Your life will bless many generations. Your ministry will bless many generations. Your impact will flow into many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge. You'll be a repairer. Your own life is repaired. And then you turn around, you repair the lives of other people. Your family is repaired. Your projects repaired. Your business repaired. And now you are going to give a helping hand to all the people. You'll be a repairer. And then the restorer of paths to dwell in. The restorer of paths to dwell in. Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. I read from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30. Verse 17. Restoration. I said restoration. Look at verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. Is she there? Did she come today? Is she there? Did he come today? Health restored. Strength restored. Deliverance restored. Dominion restored. God said, I will. When he says, I will, nothing can hinder him. The name of that sickness does not hinder him. He has said, I will. And tonight is that night. For I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds. Internal wounds, I will heal thee of thy wounds. That external wound, the sore that have been there for many years and refused to be healed tonight, sore, dry up in Jesus' name. Also, internal wound. I cannot eat anything that has pepper. I cannot eat this, I cannot eat that. Be healed in Jesus' name. I will heal thee of thy wounds. Since they performed that operation, you are going to give birth. And now the wound has been there. And the wound has continued. I dress it, I dress it, I dress it. Tonight you are healed. That wound will close up in Jesus' name. You are kind of vomiting blood. And then you went to check up. Oh, they say there is wound inside. And since that time, they gave this medication, that medication, and the wound is still there. Look at me, look at me. You are healed. I said you are healed. Look at that verse 17. I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Verse 18, thus says the Lord. Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. The city shall be builded upon our own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry, I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I will also glorify them. They shall not be small. The children also shall be as aforetime. Their congregation shall be established before me. I will punish all that oppress them. (laughs) 
you are free. You are coming to something new you have never seen before. Verse 22, and ye shall be my people. And ye shall be my people. And I will be your God. Restoration. Restoration. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 26. Isaiah chapter 1. We're reading from verse 26. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. And I counsel us as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, the Lord is promising you that restoration has come. Look at it from verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. When will that happen? Are you sure? Can you say like Job, I know the Lord will do great things tonight for me. Verse 22, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth a fruit. The fig tree and the vine tree do yield their strength. Be glad then. Be happy then. Rejoice then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vine shall overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25. Read it yourself. One, two, three, go. Did you get it? Is that for you? I said, is that for you? And I will restore to you the years that the locals have eaten. The canker worm. The, the caterpillar, the primal worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know, ye shall know, ye shall know that I am the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people, and my people, and my people shall not be ashamed. Verse 32, verse 32, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord have said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. We know it has happened. I said, it has happened because of the promise of God, because of redemption, because of restoration. Now, Joel chapter 3, verse 10. Joel chapter 3, verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords 
and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, let the sick say, let the poor say, you are strong. You are healed. You are delivered. Look at verse 21. Verse 21. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwells in Zion. I will do what I have not done for them before. For the Lord dwells in Zion. You have come to that Zion. And in that Zion today you have your miracle. Obadiah, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. Obadiah, verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess my brother, you will possess your possession. My sister there, you came to possess tonight. You will possess your possession. Number one, the promised redeemer and redemption. Number two, the present restorer and restoration. Number three, Prompt response and realization. The prompt response and realization. The Lord is going to respond promptly tonight to your prayer. As you open your mouth like this, and then as I pray to seal it up, prompt response for you tonight in Jesus' name. The watch is now. Somebody shout now. Shout that again. Look at Isaiah. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah. Chapter 1. Now. For me, it's now. For you, it's now. Prompt, response, and realization. Isaiah. Chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18. Tell me the first two words there. That's prompt. Come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as Wool. Your salvation is now. The cleansing is now. The forgiveness is now. If you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Your mouth will be full. Your life will be full. Look at 2 Corinthians, New Testament. 2 Corinthians, chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 2. Prompt, response, and realization. 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 2. For he says, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, tell me the word. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It is now. Forgiveness, it is now. Healing, it is now. 
deliverance, it is now. Miracle. Power. Transformation. Plenty. Prosperity.